What's going on guys, it's Elias, welcome back to the channel, thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the C8 Corvette's owner's manual and a couple of other things that Chevy has provided recently regarding the C8 Corvette. Now, as you may or may not know, I'm on the market for another car to basically add to my list of cars right now. I'm actually going to be making some pretty big changes to my car's lineup. So my Civic Type R is currently being turned into my race car. And as for the rest of the cars that I have on the lineup, uh, it may change. Uh, I'm looking for a little change here. So I've looked at the, the new Supra. I've, I've been looking at that. I've also read the manual for the Supra. I'm seeing uh, how the WRX STI, the future one's looking like. Basically weighing all of my options to see what the next uh, option, what my next adventure is going to be. So for today, uh, we're gonna take a closer look at the C8 Corvette manual uh, we're gonna go it's a pretty lengthy video so you know if you guys are interested in knowing some of the highlights from the c8 corvettes manuals be sure to stay tuned uh, this is quite a very long video so grab a coffee get get some drinks get comfortable i basically go over all the highlights everything that was interesting as a car enthusiast going through the manual and uh, you know I, I highlight all the things that are are super important for us to know as car enthusiasts. As I continue my journey to add another car to my stable of cars, I'm going to be putting out these types of videos as I do more and more research into the cars that I'm interested in. So if you're interested in that, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos and I hope you guys will enjoy. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and take a look at the 2020 Corvette and getting to know the Corvette. It was just yesterday that Chevrolet finally released the manuals for the 2020 Corvette. And uh, this is what I do for pretty much every car that I'm about to buy or I'm looking into. Uh, so yes, I did look into the Supra and I, I've already read the manual there. I could do something like this for the Supra. If you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments. I'm not sure if you are, but since this manual just came out yesterday and since I'm actually very impressed at what I read uh, from the manual, I wanted to share this with you guys and share my findings. So you have the full manual right here. And then uh, Chevy went ahead and condensed the manual into a getting to know your Corvette. And then there's a track preparation guide. And uh, I think that's super awesome that Chevy does this. We'll, we'll go ahead and cover that as well. So first we're gonna cover uh, the getting to know, then we're, we're gonna cover the track preparation guide. And there's a few pages in here that I highlighted for myself that I wanna share with you guys that I found super interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, I'm not gonna go in detail with everything that's in here. If I do, it'll be a three hour long video. And I don't think a lot of you will enjoy that. So I'm gonna go just through the highlights, the things that I really thought stood out to me at least and may stand out to you as a car enthusiast. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. You know, I'll, I'll put the links to these specific manuals in the description of this video, just so you guys have an idea uh, of, of what's what's in there and what, what you can if you can read if you want to read in detail you can all right so uh, taking a look here uh, this is going to show you the instrument panel you know one of the things that I do like a lot about uh, the C8 Corvette is the way that the cockpit is designed it's kind of like a fighter jet cockpit uh, it's all geared towards the driver you know that's one of the favorite my favorite things about my Honda S2000 is the fact that everything is is just for the driver. The passenger basically almost doesn't exist. Uh, everything is driver focused, and it's actually you know one of the two things that I love about the S2000. The second is obviously the engine and the 9,000 RPMs. Uh, but in this Corvette here, you see that it's uh, actually very uh, well laid out. Everything's really nice. You have all the buttons that you'd expect. Uh, you know, one thing I want to mention is that uh, this, these little asterisks denote a optional uh, item, so it may not come with on all trims. So uh, something to keep it in mind. All right, moving on to the other side of the, the cockpit, the dashboard. Again, you can see that everything is geared towards the driver. Again, my that's probably one of my favorite parts about the Corvette. Everything is, is geared towards the driver, the passenger. You know, there is a passenger spot for you, but if you're a passenger, uh, you're not the driver. You're not the captain of the ship. Uh, and I think that's uh, one, of the, one, of my, one of the coolest things about the Corvette here. Taking a quick look at the key fob here, uh, you know, there's nothing too spectacular about it. Uh, it does give you the ability to turn the car on, uh, remote vehicle start. Every single Corvette is going to come with that because every single C8 Corvette is going to be sold as a automatic. If it was a manual Corvette, uh, it would not come with a remote vehicle start. Uh, that's for obvious reasons. 
Uh, one of the cool things here is that you can actually lower the convertible top if you order the convertible Corvette from your key fob. Moving on here, you know, it kind of shows you, uh, you could make the, the car uh, lock and unlock itself automatically. There's ways to do that and it's called passive locking. Uh, it's got some of the hood axes right there, a lot of you know, you guys know. Uh, and then if your battery goes dead, it's super important to know. Uh, if you want to open out the doors, you're going to have to do it uh, with a manual mechanical lock since uh, all Corvettes use you know buttons to open everything. So if the battery is dead, those buttons don't work. And it kind of shows you here that uh, where these places are to put uh, the key that you take out of your key fob. You actually take, remove a physical key and actually open up doors and things like that. Moving on here to the keyless uh, push button start. Uh, nothing crazy to report here except for it kind of gives you uh, a provision in case your remote keyless entry key, the key fob gets uh, a weak battery or the battery's you know kind of dead. You could put it in the rear cup holder in the center of the console and that, that's kind of where the key gets read. Uh, obviously you're going to want to replace that battery as soon as possible. It also gives you battery, the location of the battery, and the bat, you know, gives you a provision to put in a battery charger. You could buy one off of Chevrolet. I think it's 150 bucks, or I believe you can get it online for about half the price. Um, and there's, there's, you know, you could buy that and plug it in to the frunk. There's actually a place where you could plug it in, and it'll charge the battery, and we'll make sure the battery's correctly charged, because uh, Chevrolet knows a lot of people that buy these Corvettes are not gonna buy them to drive daily. Uh, some people are, definitely, but most people are going to put them in the garage and bring them out on a beautiful day. Uh, another thing that I didn't know about was window re window programming. So if your battery ever dies, you should go through this procedure uh, to program the windows because the windows have kind of a cool feature where they, they open up when you open the door and when you close it, they seal everything back up so it seals... Uh, you know very very well so that you have a quiet interior but you have to go through these provisions to make sure that that gets done properly if the battery ever dies here's some details on the seat adjustments things like that you know one thing I, I actually I did want to note is that unless you get the GT2 seat or or if you get a 2LT trimmed uh, Corvette uh, you won't get lumbar support so if you get the 1LT seat with GT1 seats uh, you will not have lumbar support. So if you need that, uh, you can get it two ways. You can get the 1LT with a GT2 seat, or you can get the 2LT with the GT1 seat or GT2 seat. Just something to note. I'm gonna go ahead and skip a lot of these different things. Uh, you can set the interior lighting with that. It's actually cool to know. Now, one thing, if you put uh, aftermarket or if you put a Chevrolet, uh, engine compartment lights uh, there is a way that the, the, the computer knows okay I have lights on so whenever I unlock the doors or whenever I open the door it's gonna go ahead and light up that engine compartment making it really cool you know if you pull up to a car show and you know or it's kind of dark or if you're showing off to your to whoever you want to show off to especially at night you could unlock the door to light up the engine compartment that's pretty cool now here's a little surprise for me, you know, I, I, not that it's a big deal, but I, I kind of expected uh, this, since it's such a high-end car, to come with automatic windshield wipers. Now, yeah, it does require kind of an extra sensor, and automatic windshield wipers don't always work properly, uh, but I'm kind of surprised it doesn't come with automatic windshield wipers. Uh, it's something that I d did expect. Uh, I just kind of assumed it was going to come with it, and it doesn't. So again, some one thing to keep in mind there. I don't think it's a big deal, but uh, it's just you know something that kind of surprised me. It doesn't come with. Uh, I don't really care about the, the infotainment system. You can go ahead and go down to the description for the link if you want to go through that. I'm just glad it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It doesn't matter what uh, system you get. Uh, even the base radio system is going to have both of those, and that's all that's important to me. Uh, it's going to go through how to pair a phone and all of that good stuff. Uh, it's going to show you the audio wheel controls and how those work. It's going to show you the wireless charging. And, uh, you know, I've never seen a car with 4G LTE. I've never seen it actually used. Uh, if you have a hotspot, uh, let me know in the comments if you've used that before. Uh, I just, I don't know. Um, so it's something that, you know, you can you can spec up into your car. You got to pay for it monthly. I don't know how useful that is. 
one thing I did want to show you here is that over the air software updates. Now, it's kind of a double edged sword. It's cool that Chevy can go ahead and push updates to improve your car, uh, things like, you know, map updates and things like that. But there are some cases, you know, I've seen Tesla do this where they push an update to your car that reduces the performance of your car. And uh, hopefully that ever happens with Chevy. You know, I'm sure Chevy owners will go up in arms if that ever happened. But there's something to keep in mind. It does have that capability. Uh, I think it's the first Chevy to have that capability. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but uh, it's one of the first Chevys to have that. Um, so it's something that you should definitely keep in mind. And one of the last few things that uh, this shows you here is that, you know, if you have PDR, which I do recommend pretty much everyone to get because it's like a dash cam. It's a built-in dash cam. Uh, you can use it as a dash cam, especially for valet. Um, it'll turn on automatic recording and it'll show you what the valet is doing. Um, so that's cool as well. Uh, it goes through all the buttons here. Now, let me know in the comments how you feel about these buttons. Uh, I am ambivalent about it. I kind of like them. I kind of don't. Uh, I'm not sure how I'll feel if I if I did buy this car, um, how, I, how I'd feel after owning the car for a while. I might like that. What I do like is, you know, it shows the temperature right there on a little screen. You don't have to go through uh, the infotainment system to control any of the HVAC systems. That's pretty cool. Now, keep in mind, if you don't get uh, some of these things, like for example, the driver's temperature control, you are going to get, but the driver's heated ventilated seat controls, that's an option. Uh, if you get the 1LT, you're not gonna have that. So just keep that in mind. And then finally, you know, some of the things to put away the roof and uh, the convertible top operation. You know, I think one of the main things is during roof installation, install the rear edge first. That's very good to know, because I didn't know that. I don't think anybody does until you read the actual manual. All right, let's take a look at the track preparation pamphlets. So this this is, first of all, awesome that Chevy provides a separate uh, item, um, you know, pamphlet that shows you exactly what to do to prepare your Corvette for the track. Uh, it's awesome that Chevy's even doing that. Uh, I don't think I've seen that in any other car company, you know, especially, you know, I come from the Honda and BMW world. They normally don't do these kinds of things. Uh, to see that Chevy does that, to see that the Corvette does that, uh, it earns a lot of respect for me because they actually know that this car will be used at the track and they have provisions for it. I am going to do a separate video, a detailed video on just this, on, on track preparation for your Corvette. So uh, if you're interested in uh, looking at that, be sure to subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be releasing that uh, likely tomorrow. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go in very, very detail, you know, kind of go through the whole thing and how it affects uh, people that are going to take their cars to the track, how it affects the warranty, how it affects, you know, the cost of taking your car to the track, all that good stuff. But for this video, we're going to go you know, over and, and, and kind of generally see what uh, Chevy gives you for preparation. And the first thing really is the break in. It gives you the break in period for everything. So the tires, the brakes. So when they say brake lining, this is just brake pads. Uh, and it gives you the you know no full throttle for the first 500 miles. Don't exceed 4,000 RPM for the first 500 miles. Uh, don't do cruise control and you know kind of vary your speed uh, with the first 500 miles. Kind of standard stuff for most cars. But I'm glad that Chevy actually uh, specifically tells you how to brake in your car. I remember for my Civic Type R, it just basically said, um, yeah, just drive it easy for the first thousand miles, and that's it. Uh, it did have some provisions for every time you put new brake pads in, you have to burnish them in, uh, which uh, Corvette actually also gives you. Uh, and that's actually more in detail in the, the big manual. Um, but it's cool that it gives you pretty much everything here. Uh, and then don't do any track or performance driving for the first 1,500 miles. And, uh, you know, obviously they want you to do the engine oil maintenance first before you go and hit the track. So, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. It's got the brake preparation and how to burnish brakes and step by step, actually. So this actually gives you in detail as well. Um, and uh, it does, this has a brake by wire system. Um, so it's it's got physical brakes, but it's also got brake by wire modulation. So uh, you got to kind of uh, make sure you follow the, the manual here before you hit the track because it'll give you an understanding of how the brakes are performing um, as you go along because, uh, you know, I, I'm coming from Honda or, or even older BMWs, the brake pads, so as they start fading, you, you immediately know uh, as a track day driver, you know when your brakes are starting to fade, you know when your brakes are starting to get hot. Uh, Corvette uh, is actually going to uh, hide that from you for a while. So it's going to, it's going to, you got to pay attention to your driver information display. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. 
So stay tuned for a future video of me covering in detail that track preparation pamphlet. Uh, it's super detailed and I will go over it definitely in full detail for you guys. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the main manual, the actual full owner's manual for the C8 Corvette. So finally, uh, looking at the main manual, the, the, the actual manual that the car is going to come with in detail. And, you know, for, for those of you that are still watching the video, I understand this is a very long video. But I feel like it is beneficial for anybody that's looking to buy a C8 Corvette to know what's in the manual, to know what Chevy provides for buyers and prospective buyers in terms of information. Um, so we're going to take a look at a couple of the pages that I have kind of highlighted uh, that I thought were pretty interesting. Uh, so let's go, we're going to go ahead and skip through everything, go right to page, uh, let's say 1, let's go 49. Um, so the main thing here is track events and competitive driving. Vehicles without the Z51 package should not be used for track events and competitive driving. Um, so like I said before, it's very explicit in the manual uh, that if you do not you do not have a Z51 package, you should not be driving this on the track. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, next up here, you know, you got the oil engine oil check and things like that. And then you got the brake burnishing. And I showed you in the previous form, uh, it shows you how to do it, but this actually also says it in detail. Uh, just, you know, apply the brakes 25 times and then slow down 25 times and then cool down. Again, they say that only cars with Z51 packages should be doing this should only be run on vehicles with J55, Z51 factory equipped brake systems. So if you don't have a Z51 package, uh, don't follow these steps. Uh, it's just something cool to note. And let's take a look here. One of the things that this shows that the track prep uh, doesn't really go into detail is a, a, this manual wants you to make sure that you're checking your brake cooling kit. And, you know, it's actually awesome that this car brings brake cooling uh, from the factory and it does a really good job. If you see the picture here, I mean, it shows you exactly um, what uh, what the little brake ducts look like. And it shows that the air is going right to the brakes. Uh, again, uh, I believe this is a Z51 equipped car that, uh, that has these. I'm not sure if the non-Z51 uh, cars are going to have a lot of these brake ducts. Uh, but it wants you to make sure you inspect and, and take a look at all of them. After checking your brake ducts, it then walks you through how to lower your car for track setting. And you can lower your car almost an inch, so 0.8 inches, 20 millimeters, from the, the, what they call a nominal position. The nominal position being the factory specs. Uh, and the factory specs are going to be a little bit higher than what most people are going to want in their sports car because, you know, they do have to account for everyone that's gonna own this car. People that are just gonna cruise in them, they gotta be able to go into driveways, they gotta go be able to go up the, the Starbucks driveway, the Starbucks parking lot, all that good stuff. You know, when you hard park it, you gotta make sure that, uh, that it can get into parking lots and things like that. But if you're gonna be using the car, uh, like I, uh, I would if I got one, as a track car, uh, then you're gonna want to do these things right here. Now it gives you pretty much everything. So I think the most interesting thing is when adjusting the seat to lower limit, leave approximately 10 millimeters, 0.4 inch of thread visible. Um, that's probably for safety. So you could even probably lower it a little bit more and be get away with it. I don't know. It's up to you to decide whether or not you want to do that. So here we move on to the transmission of the car. Uh, it kind of gives you all kinds of stuff. You know, if transmission's hot, uh, then make sure to cool it off before you continue driving very hard. One thing I did want to note here, uh, and uh, this may surprise or not surprise some of you, is that spinning the tires or holding the vehicle in one place on a hill using only the accelerator pedal may damage transmission. When they say may damage transmission, it pretty much says will damage transmission, uh, and it won't be covered by warranty. So uh, if your car is uphill, uh, don't be tempted to hold the car with your accelerator pedal, be sure to hit the brake pedal to hold the car. Uh, it should go without saying. Now, if you hold the car uh, with just the accelerator pedal, you're basically overheating the clutch pack of your transmission. Uh, and also then spinning the tires, uh, that means a burnout, uh, could possibly break the LSD. And it's a very expensive uh, LSD, especially if you have the Z51, then it's electronic libido slip differential. 
and it's not covered on the warranty. Now, I don't know if they'll know or not, but uh, this car has a lot of electronics on it. It might be hard to fool uh, the warranty folks on whether or not you were doing something that's not covered. Now, here's something interesting I was actually looking for, you know, I wanted to see it somewhere and I found it in the manual, uh, is the different final gear setting for Z51 package vehicles and for non-Z51 package vehicles. So as you can see, it gives you the you know upshift allowed and maximum downshift allowed, uh, and it kind of shows you where the the car shifts at uh, depending on which which model you have. So the Z51 package uh, upshift allowed into second gear at nine miles an hour, maximum downshift allowed into first gear at 19 miles an hour. That basically means that the upper level of speed for first gear is 19 miles an hour for Z51 package cars, 39 for second gear, 65 for third, etc. Now if we look down here, it's the same for first gear, same for second gear, different for third gear. So third gear uh, maximum miles per hour is 65 in the Z51 package and 70 in the non-Z51 package. 108 for fourth gear, 102 for the uh, Z51 package. Fifth gear for Z51 is 144, it's 152 for the non-Z51. So you get shorter gear ratios in the Z51 package. That's likely due to the fact that the Z51 has that uh, extra arrow package that actually increases drag. Uh, so if all you want is extremely high top speed, you're actually going to want to avoid the Z51 package because you're going to have more drag uh, to deal with and you're not going to be able to get to, what is it, 192 miles an hour that the non-Z51 can get to. Uh, again, something to keep in mind. Now, I wanted to show you this because I was interested to know how Chevy was going to warranty their dual clutch transmission. I saw some people on YouTube, you know, during the drive, take the Corvettes, hold back both the, the left and right shifter, paddle shifters, floor the car and let go of the paddle shifters for a hard launch, even as the car was moving at a slow speed or even as the car was uh, going faster. My initial thought was like, holy crap, that's pretty hard on the clutch packs of these transmissions. I don't know how warranty is going to take to that. Well, here's our answer. And apparently it looks like Chevrolet is standing behind the transmission no matter what you do with it. Uh, rapid exit means you know you're within uh, you're under six miles per hour you hold both the positive and the negative paddle shifter the left and right paddle shifter you floor the car and then you let go of the paddle shifters at the same time that will basically launch the car as quickly as possible now that's very harsh on the drive line and very harsh on everything the fact that it, the manual states how to do it means that it's going to be covered under warranty. That's usually what it means. They're gonna to have to uh, put in a, a amendment to, the, to, this, to this manual if people start grenading hundreds and hundreds of transmissions to uh, make sure that this is not covered. But as of this writing, as of February 28th of 2020, it is covered, so have some fun. And it even says how to do it uh, when you're going above six miles an hour and it'll give you a standard exit, which means the slower uptake of the clutches. Something, you know, I, I was very surprised to see this, by the way. Uh, you know, it doesn't cover, you know, this is warning here. Uh, it doesn't cover if you lose control and crash, be ready to release the pedal rapidly, apply it immediately, the vehicle moves too quickly, do not use double pump to clutch when people or objects are near. So don't pull a Mustang and, uh, and mow over a bunch of uh, people at a car club or cars and coffee but it doesn't say anything about don't do it <laughs> basically as long as the transmission is not overheating have some fun just a quick note here uh, I'm stopping on the recommended fuel and it's 93 not 91 so if you're in California and your octane is 91 you'll have reduced performance and fuel economy that's something to note. I'm sure you guys in California and the West Coast are kind of used to seeing things like that. Uh, it's unfortunate that you guys don't get 93. I'm not sure why you guys don't get 93. It is what it is, though. Another one of the things I really wanted to see was how we were going to lift 
the Corvette. If you guys follow my channel at all, you guys know that I'm constantly lifting all of my cars to change wheels, tires, brakes, to service them, change oil, all of that good stuff. I'm actually going to be installing a new lift and a, and a new garage uh, in my house so that I'm able to kind of work on my cars a little bit easier. So I was interested to see what, what the C8 Corvette has in terms of lifting uh, and how to lift it. And it says use only a service jack with a lifting pad diameter of 64 millimeters or smaller and thick enough to make sure the jack does not contact the vehicle body. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means. There's a picture right there uh, showing me what that means. Uh, when I, if, if I do end up getting a Corvette, uh, when I get it, I'd have to take a look, a closer look at what this looks like and, and maybe even go to the dealership and see what they do to lift the, the C8 Corvettes and kind of copy that because uh, it seems a little bit different than what I'm used to. Uh, so something to keep in mind if you're going to be buying one of these and if you're ever going to service it yourself. Uh, it shows you where the pads are. So one's right uh, right in front of the rear wheel. The other one's uh, kind of right behind the front wheel. Uh, no no special, you know, it is a rear engine car, but there's no, seem, seemingly there's no special, uh, you know, modification of where you lift the car up. Uh, it looks like it's a pretty standard thing. Uh, and it shows you how to, you know, get to the battery and stuff like that. One thing to also note, the front lift system reservoir. It looks like it's a hydraulic system and uh, it's one more thing for people to service. So since this is a very high performance car, it goes without saying that you should really be checking your oil every single time you fill up the tank. It says it right here, every 400 miles, uh, especially prior to a long trip, check your oil. Now this is a dry sump system. Every single C8 Corvette Stingray is going to have a dry sump system. That's a little bit of a change from the previous Corvette where you know, only Z51 packages and up got dry sump systems. But these are all high, dry, sump, dry sump oil systems and they require a special procedure to actually uh, check the oil. So uh, here, it says it right here, uh, you have to warm it up and then uh, you can measure it afterwards and uh, you know make sure you, you do not overfill it. Uh, as a Honda owner, I've actually overfilled my uh, my oil pans on purpose just to make sure that I get enough lubrication when I'm taking those uh, hard corners at the track. Uh, a C8 Corvette with a dry sump system does not need extra oil. It, it's actually this is designed for the track, so don't need to do that. Just be sure to, you don't overfill it. And it says very particularly, do not add too much oil right there. Um, so just keep that in mind. One very cool feature that the C8 Corvette has is that it gives you access to changing the oil without having to take off any panels. You can see right here, engine oil drain plug, the O-ring seal, uh, which is right there, and then engine oil filter, and it tells you exactly how to do it. I think that's pretty cool for a performance car. It also gives you that same instruction for the transmission oil. So dual clutch transmission fluid life system. So if you're taking the car to the track, and again, only on Z51 cars do they allow you to take the car on the track and still have a warranty. Uh, but if you're taking the car to the track, uh, you should uh, add more oil, and it shows uh, it shows that somewhere here. Uh, but it also shows you that at the very least, every 45,000 miles, you should be changing the transmission fluid. That's uh, an extra expense now that we have a, a dual clutch transmission. And uh, it's something that I was curious to see and I uh, wanted to see how that they accounted for that. In addition to at a minimum changing the transmission oil every 45,000 miles, it also has a computer system that tells you uh, if you need to change it a little bit sooner. If you've been taking your car out of the track and things like that, uh, I definitely recommend changing your transmission fluid sooner rather than later. Uh, transmission fluid as it gets hotter and hotter does deteriorate. It doesn't matter uh, what you try to do to it. So you do, you do have to change it sooner if you do take it to the track. And the computer knows that and it tries to keep track of that. But um, I, I, I'd have to talk to a Chevy engineer to kind of ask them if you track the car, how many hours of track time uh, is available uh, on, these, uh, on the transmission fluid. I believe actually I read somewhere that it's 24 hours of total track time and you have to change the transmission fluid. Um, I think I read that somewhere in the manual, but I could be wrong. I'll double check on that. Looking at this here, uh, we're taking a look at how to change the air filter. And you should be doing that uh, every once in a while uh, to make sure you, you, you follow the maintenance schedule. And you do it in the back of the car, obviously the engine's in the back of the car. 
and you there's there's just instructions right here you take off a panel in the trunk of the car and you have full access to the air panel right here dark down here it shows you exactly what to replace it with and all of that good stuff another thing that kind of surprised me that uh, GM does not do that I have in my BMWs is that there's no uh, way to jump start your car without getting to where the battery is so you know the battery is under some covers in the front of the, the car it's right up here uh, top right hand corner of this slide right here and uh, you have to actually open up the the panels and get to the battery so you could jump start it with a, another battery uh, BMWs have a little uh, notch a little positive uh, terminal right in, where, where, the, where the engine is so that you can easily just open the hood and hook up another battery and turn the car on uh, for the Corvettes, you have to basically open the hatch and then go ahead and open the uh, the actual battery compartment to get it done. Uh, kind of surprising that they don't they haven't made provisions for that. Uh, maybe it does add a little bit of weight, so uh, I'll give them, I'll give them an excuse for that. Uh, taking a look at where the tow hooks are, uh, it's important to know. There's the front one right there, and then the back one is uh, right there. Um, and you can take that off and put tow hooks on. If you're going to track your car or competitively drive your car, you're usually required to have tow hooks, uh, so that's good to know. And then you got where your tow strap uh, areas are, your, your tow hooks on, uh, under the car. Uh, this is a very much a flat bottom car, pretty much. Um, so I was curious to know where the hooks were if you were going to drag your car or if you're going to you know, put your car on a trailer. Uh, I'd like to know where they are so that I can use them properly. And finally, we get to the maintenance schedule. So there's actually two different maintenance schedules. This is the normal one. And this, this is for the one that you know you may you know drive at an autocross once a year or something like that. For, for the most part, you drive the car and you drive it slowly or you know spiritedly, but not really at a track setting. Uh, this is the maintenance schedule for you, and it's good to know. I always like to take a look at maintenance schedules because it'll basically show you. Uh, which are the parts that Chevrolet is worried about and uh, which ones uh, which are the parts that you should be worried about uh, and uh, you kind of know what makes sense and what doesn't uh, and there's also a maintenance schedule additional required services severe now what severe means is you know then they do explain it in the manual but I'll explain to you guys severe means uh, if you're constantly on dirt roads or constantly if you drive the car like you stole it every single day, uh, if you take the car out to the tracks, you know, a significant amount of times, more than five to ten times uh, a year, uh, that would be more of a severe kind of setting. Uh, so this is very interesting here. And uh, no matter what, the first after the first 7,500 miles, you have to change the dual clutch transmission canister filter. Now keep that keep in mind that if you're gonna take the car to the track, you're only allowed to do so if you have a Z51 package. Uh, and you also have to add, uh, I think, two liters of fluid to the transmission, uh, and that's done. That, that can be done. It should. I, I would recommend that be done by the Chevrolet dealer, just so they have that written down somewhere that they did that. In addition to that, uh, you know, you have to change the dual clutch transmission canister. It's basically the filter. Uh, yeah, it's kind of the filter for the transmission. Uh, you have to change that more often than you change the transmission, uh, the transmission fluid itself. So right here, right above that, change the dual clutch transmission fluid life percentage. Um, check the dual clutch transmission fluid life percentage. And you're supposed to only check every 45,000 miles. Uh, I recommend you check more often than that. Uh, I would check that every you know 10,000 miles. I would see all right, where's the transmission fluid level, uh, and how much life do I have left. If I'm getting close to the end, I would say anything less than 20% of fluid life left. I would just go ahead and change that. Uh, it's not going to be cheap. Transmission fluid super uh, super expensive, and I think it's between seven and ten uh, liters. We can we can search that and find that in a second. But uh, it's good to know that the the dual clutch transmission is uh, thought about in the maintenance schedule. Uh, there's also all these you know different oil changes and things like that, uh, and there's the rest of it as well. well you got to replace the windshield wiper blades. Uh, you got to change the air filter, the passenger air filter. Uh, and check the engine air filter and all that good stuff. So how many liters of a fluid does a transmission take? Let's take a look. And then finally, the one of the things I don't like is the fact that it doesn't show you which fluid or lubricant 
GM requires for your dual clutch transmission. It tells you pretty much everything else, you know, GM approved dot four, GM approved dot four. It shows you the coolant, all that good stuff, but it doesn't show you which fluid you can use. Um, kind of upsetting considering that transmission fluid is already very expensive and you want to make sure you use the right fluid in that transmission. Uh, I may have to take a look at uh, the manufacturer of the transmission and see if they have a particular information on it. Uh, it may, they may not uh, because they this is a kind of a bespoke transmission. Uh, there's the seven speed version of this transmission on the Mustang GT500 and there's eight speed on the C8 Corvette. So I mean, I'll, I'll see if I can find that, but that's just something interesting. All right, guys, if you're still here, it means that you and I went through the manuals for the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette. Uh, now we know it in much more detail than we did before. Thanks for hanging in there. Uh, I think we covered everything that's pretty much relevant to us car enthusiasts, you know, from the oil to the lubricants to the, the CTCT, uh, the suspension, uh, some of the warranty wording wording in there. So let me know in the comments if you enjoyed and you watched to the end. If you watched this far, let me know that you did watch this far. I'm actually pretty curious. Uh, and thanks for watching, guys. So if you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Thank you.